Welcome to this little stream. Oh, um, hang on one second. I'm just going to check the audio. Seems okay. Okay, this is um, not really curl development, but um, my little stream today about the curl 7.68.0 release, as I showed on the release screen. And that uh, I can show you on my um, web browser. I just um, pushed the release to the website just minutes ago, and the website has updated, so it actually says um, 7.68.0 down there. No, it hasn't been um, updated by any package. Uh, well, yeah, there are no binary packages uh, known to be updated to the latest version yet, but it's only been out for a few minutes. So yes, <clears throat> today is the um, it's a Wednesday, so we do releases Wednesdays. Typically, we do them every eight weeks. Uh, this time it took nine weeks just because uh, I, I didn't want this release to be, you know, uh, in the middle of the sort of New Year holiday season. So I pushed this release a week, and we got nine weeks instead. But I believe we're now back on eight week release cycles for the foreseeable future. So that's cool. Okay, so what's in 7.68.0? I just now uh, also pushed a blog update about the release. So if you go to the web page, you can al always uh, look at this um, at the top. There's this change log, so you can go there. So here's the full change log for the release. I believe we have 124 bug fixes listed. Um, so you can read all about them here. If you want to go into every 124 bug fixes. But I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to switch over to my blog post and walk through what I highlighted there because I think those are the sort of the main points of this release. This is release number 188. And I also blogged about the fact that I did uh, the other day, a few weeks ago actually, I went back and recreated the changelog completely from the beginning of, of the first curl release. Uh, curl, uh, really, I can't talk. From the, the first curl release done in, in uh, March 1998. And then when I sort of recreated the entire changelog, so now the, the full changelog is available on, on the web page. If you go to this um, this changelog now, if you go to the bottom of this page, it actually says uh, 4.0 here in the, in the bottom. And that is the first ever curl release done. So now this cha changelog is the complete changelog for the entire curl history. So anyway, when I did that, I noticed that I had done a, a miscalculation in, in which release number this is. Not important at all. But anyway, this then turns out to be the 188th uh, release. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, I've been doing this for a while. So yes, this is release number 188. It took uh, nine weeks to produce 63 days so now we've been at it well we're reaching um, we're closing into 8,000 days since uh, we're um, as I said we did 124 bug fixes I'm very liberal in we're sort of accepting what a bug fix is so it, even you know document fixing typos in the man pages those are also bug fixes we do a lot of tiny bug fixes we fix test cases they are bug fixes so they and tend to become almost every other commit is a bug fix um, so we uh, what, what else can we see we can see it we added a new function I'll get back to that um, to the uh, live curl API uh, I think it's a pretty cool one uh, and uh, I could also mention that we were 70 contributors helping out to make this release. Contributors being anyone who reported bugs, filed code, helped out, came with advice, uh, suggestions, good suggestions or whatever. So 70 people, 32 were new, never did it before. 
31 people wrote code that were merged into this and 13 of them were first time contributors. So I think it's pretty cool that we're approaching 22 years uh, in the project and we still get 13 newbie uh, code authors in, in just a single release cycle like this, like in nine weeks, 13 for first time contributors or first time code authors, basically more than one per week. Uh, that's, I think it's great. So as you can see on, uh, that I'm, I'm scrolling down the, my webpage about the, my blog post about this release, um, we announced a security vulnerability or security advisory today CVE 2019-15601. It's a long, uh, weird CVE ID. It is a stupid bug in the handling of file colon URLs on Windows. So it appears that on Windows, which is a sort of a foreign and weird system to me because I, I never really use it. I don't really develop much on it. But anyway, it, it's on Windows when you open a file and you just ha happen to craft that file name properly, like starting out with a, a sufficient number of slashes, it will automatically try to access that as a host name uh, using the SMB protocol. And curl didn't filter that off properly. So you could, if you would ask curl to work on a file colon URL and you would craft the URL correctly or incorrectly depending on your viewpoint curl will then ask the windows system to access that file and that file would then be a host name so you would you could sort of trick curl to do an smb request um, on a windows machine so you could possibly do some nastiness with that i don't think anyone has ever exploited this and it's a bit of a sort of a stretch to actually become a problem but it is potentially a problem so we need to uh, we need to handle it as a, as a proper security problem. It was reported in the Curl Bounty program. We have rewarded the, the reporter 400 USD according to our bug bounty pro program. So yay, th that's cool. That's the highest reward we have given out so far. It's not that this is the most significant problem we have gotten reported, I think, but we're trying to raise the uh, reward amounts so even if the, this is still a fairly low security, I mean, graded low, the security vulnerability, we still had up more money. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can continue to do that, to, to raise the amounts even for, for these smaller problems. So report more security problems and get yourself some rewards. So that was the most significant bug fix, I think. We also added some fun things in this release, things that I refer to as changes in the changelog. So basically everything we do, they're either changes that change behavior features, add stuff, or they're bug fixes that just correct problems. So we added support for a new TLS library, Bear SSL. I blogged about it separately. So Bear SSL is the, is the 14th library you can select to build curl with and if you go to this and you can watch this little uh, uh, slide here you can follow the development over time in curl how we have added support for different tls libraries since the beginning of time so actually if you look at this uh, very leftmost part, uh, part here you can see that we actually shipped curl back in 1998 without tls support at all it didn't it didn't support HTTPS until just, uh, I think, June 1998. So uh, a few months there without TLS support. But then we added support for, for SSLE, as it was called back then. It, it was renamed to OpenSSL shortly thereafter. And blah, blah, blah. And we've added support for a lot of different TLS libraries over the years. Bear, bear SSL then being the latest one. Um, I'm not sure what we can say about Bear SSL. I'm not an expert on Bear SSL. It seems to be focused on embedded system. It's a fairly small one. Uh, it doesn't support TLS 1.3 and it has some other um, shortcomings, which might be a problem for you. But anyway, it has been requested before by users. Uh, and uh, sure, here it is. 
AXTLS, uh, yeah, good point there. Uh, as you can see here in my little graph here, we can see we added uh, AXTLS in 2010, I believe. And then up here in, in just last year or so, we removed AXTLS support again. So it, the graph went down here. We're actually going to remove um, Polar SSL soon too. So it's going to go down to 13 libraries again in the future. So we removed AXTLS simply because uh, it is unmaintained. It lacks features. The, uh, the project didn't seem to even sort of receive feedback or communicate. So we, we thought it wasn't a library that we could recommend to users with sort of with a good clean conscience. So we removed support for it. It's not a library we recommend for users to, to build curl with. If you need a curl that is focused on a small footprint for embedded systems, we rather recommend others. For example, Wolf SSL, which I would say is probably the best choice for an embedded small footprint TLS library. So, okay, um, that's bare SSL. Mm, we also added two new command line options for handling e tags. I blogged about that separately as well. And those two options help you do conditional HTTP requests in a in a way that doesn't use timestamps, which is more reliable and better, especially if you use sub-second precision or something like that. So you, you use these two options, e tag save or e tag compare. So e tag basically being a, a really opaque identifier for the particular resource version you're getting. So if you ask for a document, you can get an e tag for it as well. And you store that e tag and you ask, get me the updated document if it's using a different e tag than the previous one. So these are just convenient helpers to do that. You could do it manually before, but it was a much more work and, and complicated thing to do. Um, yeah, so those are two command line options. We actually add a third new command line option called parallel immediate. Par um, we added parallel transfers to curl a while ago, a few releases ago. And so when you do parallel transfers with curl, it'll of course do them, do many transfers concurrently. So they it won't do them seriously. It will do them at the same time. And the question is there rather should, when you, you for example, if you ask to, if you ask curl to do three requests or transfers from the same host name, should it open up three connections at once even if they use HTTP2 that could uh, multiplex them over the same connection, or should it rather, uh, if they see they are on the same hosting, wait to see if the if it can multiplex connect uh, the subsequent transfers over the same initial connection. And now, starting now, it will actually try to it will prioritize to do multiplex transfers rather than new connections that might slow them down a little bit, but if you use this option, parallel immediate, you, you basically tell curl to prioritize speed and use more connections rather than be conservative and use more multiplexing, potentially a little bit slower to set things up. A very, very niche functionality, but still using that makes curl behave like it did before this release when it, in regards to parallel transfers. I mentioned that we added a new libcurl API. So libcurl has now has 82 different functions and we added a function called curl multi wake up. I blog about it separately on this page. Um, it is a function call to wake up another thread, basically libcurl using thread you, that waits for libcurl to get feedback. So in curl, when you do transfers you, uh, in the API, API wise, you usually use curl multi pull or curl multi wait, which are sort of wait for uh, transfer socket activity or a timeout. So don't just, you know, busy loop, just wait until there's 
activity happening on a connection or there's a timeout. So that's the typical main loop activity you do in curl. And if you're waiting for a timeout and, and there's no activity, and then suddenly you decide that you're possibly you want to quit your application, you want to read a message somewhere or do something, you in the, that was sort of you had to do some manual quirks to make that happen. So now we introduce a, a made sort of a go to method on how you can abort one of those weights, sort of stop sleeping, wake up, and that's what this call is curl multi wake up wake up another call that is waiting for for something to happen a bit complicated way for me to explain it but you should really if you're using the the multi api you you probably know what i'm talking about and you could just read up on the blog post or in the man page and i'm sure you will understand it'll be interesting to see how how that fares going forward i'm still on the changes I, the we have two other changes that i want to mention so for example um you know I, I just mentioned we support 14 different tls libraries now might go down to 13 soon but we're on 14 now and one of them being open ssl and it turned out that we have a sort of minor discrepancy on how we handle different tls libraries so if you if you verify a server certificate using these tls libraries and you mm, this is somewhat complicated. So if you verify that server cert, you need typically have to have a, a certificate to verify against, right? And it turns out, turns out that we more or less un, inadvertently didn't uh, um, acknowledge or, or uh, we weren't happy enough to, for, for example, for Carl to use an intermediate cert to verify a server cert. Um, while you could do that with all the other TLS libraries curl supports basically because they, most of them do that by default and a modern OpenSSL doesn't. Now we tell OpenSSL to do it. So now we can use an intermediate cert to verify your cert, server cert. We don't need to go all the way to the root certificate um, to, to verify the cert. So it's just a sort of a mistake and, and now we make sure that the different that curl works more similar and independent of which TLS library you build it to use. And you can also set this option, curl SSL opt, no partial chain option to make sure that curl actually continues to work like before and require the entire chain and not a partial chain. Very certificate uh, specific. And another little thing we introduce here. Uh, so we have a pro progress callback in, in libcurl that gets, it's a callback function that gets called repeatedly while you do transfers or basically whatever you do, curl will call that a pretty often. And you can then do things like, you know, update a progress meter or check something or whatever. And uh, now, starting with this release, we add a new return code, new ma ma magic return code value that you can return called curl progress func, func curl progress func continue. And if you report return that from a um, progress callback, the pro the the regular internal function will be called as well in addition to your progress function. So you get both of them, both the internal and your Otherwise, you replace the internal functionality with your own callback function. So, okay, that was a little long way to, to explain the six changes in 7.6800. Nothing really groundbreaking, no major bells and whistles. I don't think 7.6800 will become any release to sort of remember or stand out in history going forward. But, um, well, that this is how we do things. When we do these frequent releases, we rarely have very big sort of, you know, earth shattering releases. And in my blog post here, I have a few fun um, bug fixes I wanted to highlight. As I mentioned, 124 bug fixes. There are more than these, but I just wanted to sort of emphasize these because these are 
I think, more important or more interesting than typos in demand pages or fixing out of memory leak problems in, in test cases. Um, so for example, I wanted to highlight that uh, we, in this release cycle, we s enabled CI builds on uh, Azure. Uh, well, I, I think it's called Azure Pipelines. So Azure now, uh, Azure, of course, uh, you know, Azure Cloud things, they now provide uh, CI builds pretty much like, uh, well, like Travis and, and, and all the other CI services. And they, of course, also uh, offer free CI uh, ability for open source project. And I enabled that a few weeks ago and it turned out that they're really fast and convenient. So I've, I enabled more builds and I've actually switched off a few builds from Travis and turned them on on Azure instead because Azure turned out to run them slightly faster and I think a little bit more stable. Um, and when I did that, I also, so basically, and also it makes sense to just, if we support, if you use even more CI, different CI services and they all provide, you know, a free tier up to a certain amount, it's better to use seven different services because then we can maximize parallelism and all the free CPU we can get on all those services instead of sort of using one of them much more than the others because then we lean too much on one of the services. Like right now we actually lean on Travis CI a little bit too much because it makes the Travis uh, set of builds take much longer time than all the other builds. So we often end up waiting for Travis. It's good to, if we can move out more Travis jobs to the other services. Um, well, and uh, when, when I did that, I also experimented with uh, fixing our not really fixing, but polishing how we do our torture tests. And I blogged about that separately as well. In this post, I call how randomly skipping tests made them better. In, in the, because our torture tests are, they're the regular test cases, but in, in the, in, when we run them in torture mode, we run like, we run one test case, we run it first and we count the number of, uh, function calls like uh, how many fallible functions we invoke in a single test case like malloc f open socket blah 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 and then uh, we call and then we do the same test again and we make the first of those calls fail and then the second then the third then the fourth the fifth the sixth and on on and on and, and the typical test case do 100 or 200 of those function calls and by making sure that we can fail each one of them, that we handle the exit path, we don't leak in the memory, we don't crash anything. We just verify that the library is, is really solid in out of memory cases or all the exit paths that we can find this way. It's really, really awesome test, but it's really time consuming. Doing this every test case basically 100, 200 times and we have 1300, 1400, 1500 tests. It takes a long time. So we basically never do them in the CI because of the slowness. It, it takes hours to do a full one on, on a fast machine. But I, I came up with this little idea that I blogged about here that I'm actually just randomly skipping a, a bunch of, of these iterations <clears throat> to make sure <laughs> that we do more tests. But since most of these uh, torture tests are actually testing the same exit paths over and over, so by randomly skipping a few, we usually skip a few that were already tested. So by skipping a few, we managed to go through more torture tests and that turned out to be really good. And when I did that, we I think I fixed like nine or 10 different bugs in, in the, uh, that were problems in, in the exit path. So that, that was good. Um, yeah, GitHub Actions is already also nice. GitHub Actions is very similar to the Azure Azure pipelines. We we have um, we have enabled uh, GitHub Actions builds too, but I haven't really uh, worked on that. So we could possibly move more Travis jobs over to GitHub as well. Sort of in the same idea that we should really uh, maximize parallelism and use all of the free services. Um, as much as possible, sort of. So they all spend 
x amount of minutes rather than one spending x times five and one of them spending x divided by two. So okay, that's that's a, a little bit of what Azure and Travis. So, and actually, we recently also enabled the ARM builds for Travis, and that's been an adventure because the ARM builds on Travis are uh, totally unreliable for us. And I believe it is um, because of uh, Travis and not because of our code. I ran a lot of ARM uh, tests manually, but I really cannot reproduce the problems that we see on Travis. And the Travis failures seems to be a bit, um, they seem to be rather random. So, um, uh, yeah. So, GitLab, no, I don't actually use any GitLab. Uh, at all right now. Um, so um, I think it's, I don't think we're in a particular need to add more CI systems right now. We're, we're more in a need to prob probably move more things off Travis to the other CI systems and pro possibly to add more more uh, flavors of builds to the existing CIs. So, yeah, I, I, um, you know, I, I should show you a little thing. I, I, I have this, um, I have this slide that I have in a curl presentation somewhere. Stupid, uh, hang on a second. It, decided to not show the correct Firefox. Yeah. So there, here's a slide from a current presentation I've done. Here's the 32 third party dependencies you can build curl to use. All of these are, well, my main, my, well, I don't have many problems with Travis, but my most my biggest problem with Travis right now is that we have so many builds on Travis so that we have, I think we have like 36 builds on Travis and Travis run, since we're on the free tier, it runs only X of them in parallel. So it run, do, the, do those 36 builds takes typically like 10, 12 hours or so, which is uh, a lot of time and it's, it's slightly annoying. So we're, I want to make sure that they, run faster basically we do that by running less of them fewer of them on travis uh, apart from the arm flakiness then so the arm arm flakiness is uh, really something uh, wrong on travis as well but I, I believe the arm builds are still labeled beta and i don't have a lot of different arm build options anyway so i'm, I'm happy for for that going for right now at least. So I wanted to show you these, these, the green boxes here on this slide are actually third party dependencies that you can build to use. So there are actually 32 different ones. So that you can't really build, mix and match exactly all of them. Uh, but uh, with, H with the TLS libraries here in the HTTP box, you can actually build with more than one of these. You can actually build with a set of these. So the number of build combinations that you can build curl to use, I mean, the number of build combinations you can build curl in is, uh, yeah, it's mind boggling. There are literally millions and billions of combinations and we only test a, a very narrow subset of them. So going forward, I want to make sure that we possibly test more of the m important build combinations in, in the CIs, maybe. It's also a little bit of a, uh, you know, is it worth the struggle and, and uh, spending more CPU hours and time on everything. So anyway, um, that's where we were with Azure and, and stuff. So it has improved our CI system a little bit at least. And, and the, those torture tasks, getting them running on, on Linux and Mac OS has helped. We found a few things well, several things, and I think it'll also help us keep libcurl being really solid going forward. 
uh, well, the third party library, well, there, I, we have a little bit of a mix of everything there, I think. Since, um, since most of these CI systems, again, we're using those free tier CI systems, most of them basically offer different Ubuntu setups, right? So we get Ubuntu 18.04 or whatever. And if we can build curl with the third party dependencies that come with that Ubuntu version, it is really convenient to just install that and, and build curl with that version and be happy with it. So then we do that in many cases. In some other cases, we we get the third party dependency of their Git repo and build it and run it and just you know go in with their bleeding edge. Like when we do, we do two different. Uh, for example, we do two different HTTP three builds in the CI and HTTP three being really you know bleeding edge. So the, they're they're using components that aren't even available as, a, in, as packages in any Linux distro really. So we really need to get it from the from their uh, Git repositories. And some other thing, <coughs> when, when we're not happy with the, with the packages that the um, Ubuntu versions that we have, that they provide, we get the Git version and build it. Uh, boring SSL is also such an example. They don't really ship in a, and a good packages for for them, and so we get it from the bleeding edge. <clears throat> it tend to work out pretty good. I mean, uh, you going with, for example, different projects, Git repositories in their master branches is of course a little bit shaky because sometimes things break because of that. But mm, in general, it, it works out. Um, we found a bug in, in the um, HTTP2 handling or how we do multiplexing, really. I, I call the, the bug fix prefer multiplexing to using new connections because um, basically in curl, good morning I say, in curl whenever you do set up a new connection it checks if it can reuse an existing connection instead of creating a new one. And if you do HTTP2, it can reuse the existing connection and do multiplexing over that connection. And curl always uh, curl is always supposed to to prefer an existing connection that it can do multiplexing over because it, it it'll be faster since the connection is already there. It can just add a stream and it'll, it it, sh it will work instead of setting up a new connection with it is time consuming and resource using. But it turned out that we had a bug from a regression from some versions ago that made it in some cases not prefer multiplexing, but prefer setting up a new connection. So it would multiplex less than it could otherwise do. So we fixed that. We have another pending bug related to this that we haven't had time to fix yet. So there's going to be some more multiplexing fixes in the next release, I'm sure. Um, complicated stuff, that multiplexing thing. And we're going to have to dig into HTTP3 multiplexing too soon. Well, we, I, uh, whoever, because that's still um, one of those things marked as not really working for HTTP3 in, in curl yet. <clears throat> it turns out that um, we didn't support two of the known host keys with when you build curl to use SCP or SFTP with leap SSH2, talk about third party dependencies again. So we support two different SSH libraries, lib SSH2 and lib SSH, them being two different uh, SSH, SSH libraries, even though they're named very similarly. One is with the number two and one is without the number two. And anyway, um, it turns out that libssh2 supports those two key types, but we had to adapt our code to make sure that we handle them correctly for the known host thing, and now we do. Um, yeah, we are going. I'm going to land support for a third SSH library really soon because now I have shipped this uh, 7.6.8.0. Now I can. Um, uh, open up the feature freeze again, and I'm going to land this. So I'm, I'm just going, yeah, Wolf SSH. I'm going to support Wolf SSH uh, for SFTP only, going uh, initially at least. So I have, it is already working. I'm just going to 
uh, wait a few days to, to make sure that the, the release lands fine and we don't find any alarming big issues and so maybe maybe like early next week I can land the Wolf SSH support and see where that goes. Um, Wolf SSH is probably suitable for people who want more uh, a more smaller footprint uh, SFTP enabled curl for example. <clears throat> and I did a little mistake previously in the OpenSSL code I tried to clean up or actually I tried to improve. I did improve the error messages when we get a syscall error from OpenSSL because very sort of OpenSSL error messaging is, mm, I would call it less than ideal or maybe um, not so good as most people would like it, but I tried to improve it in, in, and I broke curl slightly when I did it. It made it more sensitive for close notify messages which wasn't my intention that was a mistake we're fixing it now um, and look i'm calling this a bug fix too as well as a change so yeah i did a partial chain thing i already mentioned it because it's up here as well okay so uh yeah <laughs> Uh, anyway, and let's emphasize the partial chain fix. So yeah, okay. Uh, and I, I, we had another little fun bug fix. With, this is really uh, also a very subtle one. But it turns out that someone using a 32-bit system, well, a, th a system, a 32-bit system with a 32-bit time t. Well, the, the point being that it's a 32-bit time t. So you can only store times up to 2038, right? Early 2038 in the year. So uh, if you parse, and, and these days, if you parse, for example, cookies and you get a timestamp, you start to see cookies that set a timestamp beyond 2038. So you can't really store that time in a time T that is 32 bit. And well, this is usually not a big problem, but in, in internally, then we, when we found such a uh, a string that you really couldn't store because it, your time t is too small. We stored it as a zero, so that we failed to parse it. But but in the, in the in the case of cookies here, curl considers such cookies as uh, session cookies, and not a cookie with a uh, expire date. And the, the the treatment is slightly different between cookies that times uh, expires or cookies that never expire or expire at the end of the session. So basically, now we have a, a now the code sees that this is a value larger than we can store, so we will in then instead store the maximum value and pretend that it was the. So, if it says year twenty thirty nine, it'll store max int with which says twenty thirty eight instead. Basically, <clears throat> it'll be fine, mostly at least for another 18 years, and then hopefully not that many people will have 32-bit time t's anymore. <clears throat> um, yeah, and so that's about it. Those are, those are only like uh, six bug fixes that I um, highlighted here. <clears throat> and as I said, there are many more most of the minor I should hope or I expect I think that this release should be a fairly you know low friction no particular alarming terrible bug happening I have learned time and time again that it doesn't really matter how much testing we do how much polishing things we do you know all the builds are green and everything is fine and dandy is only when we actually ship and say hey here's a new release that that triggers people to download it and build things and try things so even if we've had a weeks of testing and everything have been looking fine it is now that people are actually testing things that so the actual bug reports they pop up now like minutes hours after the, the release so it's always interesting to 
to go to GitHub and see how long time it takes until um, the first bug appears that says 7.6.8.0. And well, when did I actually upload it? I uploaded it uh, some time ago, so it's been more than an hour. Let me be very specific here now. I'm going to, you, you don't see this window, but I'm going to check. I actually emailed the release email announcement at 7.46 my time. That's uh, one and a half hours ago. So it was pretty good. No bug reports so far. Uh, yeah, I, um, I don't really mind. It doesn't really matter when I do the releases really. Um, but it just turned out that, that it works pretty good. It, it, I li like having this fixed framework for how we do releases. So we do releases every eight weeks. So that makes it really possible so to set release dates for years ahead, basically. It doesn't really work because sometimes we adjust them anyway. But uh, And then we can have this set up. So we do four weeks of feature. We accept features and merge changes. And we have four subsequent weeks of bug fixes only. Do the release, start over. So I like that sort of cycle cyclic development thing and then it doesn't matter if we release on a particular if we release on a tuesday or a friday that i don't think that matters much but now we have just set on a wednesday and since we do every sort of every eight weeks we always do it on wednesdays because and it makes it uh, easy to count on easy to just uh, remember and work with so i, I think it uh, I, I like having it predictable and uh, planable. So I'm pretty satisfied with this approach. Hopefully and ideally we will also make sure that we can, uh, my hope is always that we don't have any serious, you know, flaws last minute that say, on this system it now crashes when I try this. So we have to do a follow up patch release in in a few days or next week or anything because that's so annoying and it keeps on happening and we keep trying to polish our tests and, and, and routines and everything to make sure that it doesn't happen but it still pops up every now and then and it's annoying but um hopefully we're getting better hopefully we will be able to just do our eight week cycles like clockwork going forward. I should also mention that we, we do since a bunch of years um, try really hard to make sure that when, when you know the release number now 7.68.0 the zero means there basically that we bumped the, the minor number to 68 because we added stuff. It, they changed things sort of so we only if we don't add any features or changes in, in a release we just bump the, the patch version so it would be 7.68.1 if we don't do any changes in the in the release but usually we do usually people are keen to do things like changing things and then we bump the minor number so these days we are usually on a dot zero release uh, or a version number <clears throat> i think uh, for example I, since i'm going to i want to merge the uh, as i mentioned the wolf ssh support soon so um, that's going to be counted as a change so it's if we don't mess up the next version will be 7.69.0 and then since we're on a um, clockwork so we can go here and I can go to if we go to the development page here you can see that it is already here next release is scheduled to happen on February 27 so we know already now and we plan for for the release then <clears throat> and and uh, just to sh continue down this but if you're interested you can go to this um, here release calendar in the if you go here uh, you can go to and, and watch the 
release calendar on Google. And you can see, uh, so this is a Google calendar and you can just add it to you know your Google calendar thing. So you can see here we have a release here and there's a feature freeze on the one, two, you're right, on the 29th. So that's only three weeks. That's uh, So I was wrong, this under, and the next cycle is actually just um, seven weeks. So we had nine weeks, this one, seven weeks, next one, and then back to eight weeks. So, so you can actually go here and you can see, oh, Carl, 8,000 days of big celebrations on the 13th uh, of February. Uh, and then, wait a minute, why does it say the 26th? It should say the 27th. What time zone is this? Yeah, okay. No, this is a Wednesday. I shouldn't say 27th. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously confused now. How did, how did I mess up this? Okay, it doesn't matter really. Maybe it, it is February, it looks like February 26th, right? It's not 27. It is, it is 26. <laughs> mm, okay, I better fix that. Uh, it's actually, yeah, I, I, I um, should fix it. I don't, I won't do it right now, but I'll, I'll fix it. It shouldn't say the wrong date, even if it's just off by one. Off by one is a sort of a classic thing, right? Uh, yeah. That's a bug, but uh, it's not terribly bad. Yeah, how will I celebrate 8,000 days? Mm, I don't know. Maybe with an extra cup of coffee or something. I don't have any particular plans for anything. It's just, you know, just a number anyway. <clears throat> so, okay. There's the, the blog post about it. There's the web page about the release. Boom, we are still on. Yeah, well, I wanted to show you two now here. So if we go to documentation, we can go to the vulnerabilities and bam, there we can see, uh, since I mentioned this uh, SMB access smuggling via file URL on Windows, that's a new security. Uh, security problem here it is so that's the one I'm, I'm talking about so you can read up all the, all the details about it in here what to do Fernando Munoz uh, reported it and discovered it uh, but I wanted to show you this uh, yeah, that's vulnerability number 93 in total so you can see I like also, so, so here, this is a sort of fall down chart showing which versions that are vulnerable to which known security problems. So going down a little bit, they're very vulnerable to a lot of problems. So if you go if you look at the release log, you can see this vulnerability count column. You can see that uh, there's this release 7.34.0. Vulnerable to 55 different uh, security problems in Carl. And here's the list. Mm. Most of them, of course, uh, not terribly uh, alarming because most of them are very niche and specific and uh, not easily exploitable by anyone. Yeah, I like the graph too. That's one of my favorites on the website. So. Yeah, enjoy it. And if you, you can actually scroll to the right as well, so it's it's really wide to maybe a bit hard to get uh, an overlook. And it, it actually only tracks down to 6.0. It's not because it's actually, some of these actually exist probably before, but I, I mostly just stopped there. Sort of. So you can see some of those problems existed already in 6.0, many of them were introduced in 7.1. 7.1 is actually the first libcurl release. So libcurl doing that introduced, as we can see, starts a bunch of uh, problems. 
<laughs> six to zero is ridiculously old. So it's really, yeah, I can click on this so you can see. Uh, September 13, 1999. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really, um, well, old. So we can also go to the release log so we can, it shows. I like the release log as well, and it, so you, that because it allows you to go back to look, for example, Zito Zero, September 13. <clears throat> but you know, it's it's uh, one of my, uh, one of the fascinating things in in the core project is the age of installations that some people are using. I mean, it wasn't that long ago someone reported a problem. I believe it was with 7.19.7. .7. It was last last week or so. So, and that's you know that's from 2009. So we have a lot of those users who are actually installing things somewhere, forget about it for a very 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 long time, and then they come back and say, well, when I do this, it doesn't really work with this version. And, and then we have this accumulated number of bug fixes since that. I believe that's this column is number of bug fixes, third from the right. So you can see the accumulated number of bug fixes, a lot of them. <laughs> well, of course, I mean, some of them are regressions and some of them, most of them are not important, but still a lot of, and, and then there's the vulnerability count too. So if you didn't patch it, uh, that one, 30, 41 known vulnerabilities. Okay, most of them won't matter to you, but I'm pretty sure some of them will. Yeah, well, I think 7.64. That's not even a year, right? So, um, so that's that's decent. So if you're if you're up in in the somewhere here, one two years old, I I, I don't hold that against anyone because I'm I mean distros and everything they they want to go with stable things and they sit around for a while so i'm fine with i understand that no, no, the people will have software versions especially when we do these releases every eight weeks of course people won't keep up with the latest all the time not even i mean i i run debian unstable myself and it keeps up fairly well but not even i do that sort of have the latest installed in my distro Right, Mac OS is actually pretty much, uh, they're, they're usually fairly up to date with the latest ones. So yeah, I think they, I think they do a pretty good job. Uh, Windows ships 7.55.1, I believe. 55, yeah. And they, they're, I'm not sure I can say, uh, be as positive about that because they they seem to be stuck on that. They ship that version in the Windows 10 18.03 and now, almost two years later, they're still stuck on that version. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit of a. Mac OS is definitely better than Windows. In in yeah, exactly. The uh, <laughs> the unreleased thing in in Windows is also. I've, I've tried to be gently complain about that to them, but uh, they haven't uh, bothered to. Why would they? Don't read? I don't have any say about it they don't really listen to me about it either but i still i've mentioned it to the and i know that some of the people that are involved in that have read it so <clears throat> yeah if you go with the, the that's a subsystem for a linux thing in windows you can you you can install a linux distro with a much newer curl version of course but i think that's a different matter <clears throat> So in the, in the curl website, we actually have, a, the, it's actually, it's, it's, it counts this currently zero of the listed downloads are of the latest version. We also have, I have a fairly sophisticated script that goes through all, so the download page is really a huge. Um, so you see it, it lists, quite a lot of packages for quite a lot of different operating systems and, and a, quite a number of Linux distributions. And all of these, all, all of these are basically in, in a, 
in a little database and I have a script that scans them every now and then and checks for updates. So it actually updates everything automatically. So if one of these updates their uh, versions to the latest, my script will seem detect it and update the download page to mention that particular version. Uh, it works fairly well. Usually most people don't really have to bother about this because most people will install it from, you know, they have it in Mac OS, Windows or, or the Linux distro or anything. So they don't really have to bother about our download page. But I still think it's fun and interesting and some people do care about it. <clears throat> well, that's about it. Uh, <clears throat> so I've been doing this for an hour now. Yeah, curl, uh, right, Windows ships curl, um, yeah, since 1803. So they've done it for a while. They actually shipped it in some beta before that. Uh, apart from the WSL thing. But um, I, I don't, I'm not, in, I, Exactly like uh, in the Mac OS case, I'm not involved in that at all. I, sh I ship curl releases, curl code, and they do their releases and they do their builds and whatever they think is necessary. One of the major problems there, I think, with the, with the Windows version I discovered just the other day is that they don't build it, um, they don't sh build with uh, lib. Z or Z, Z lib or whatever you call it. Um, so it doesn't do uh, gzip uncompression by default. Uh, I mean, if you, it doesn't support the dash dash compressed option for curl. So it, you can't ask for compressed content and automatically decompress it on, on when receiving it. And while, while that might not be a big problem for anyone, because I mean, you might not want to do that. But if you want to do that, you can do it with a command line too. And if you do, for example, you go to one of these fancy browsers, copy as curl features, you know, that's a cool feature in uh, the four major browsers support. And if you do that, you, you, you can copy as curl and you will get a command line that mm, in many cases will use that dash dash compressed uh, I can't speak, uh, the dash dash, dash 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 compressed option. And if you then get that, you copy as curl, you paste it in your uh, Windows uh, prompt thing, and you will get an error from curl back that says, and we don't support dash dash compressed. <clears throat> and I think that's totally unnecessary of Windows uh, or, or, the, or Microsoft to do that because they could just easily have enabled it. And I think they should have because I think it's a, a more of a, the, fundamental thing on the web that you ask for compressed content and because that's what the browsers do all the time. Of course, they ask for more than just gzip these days, but they could at least have supported gzip. They should support more. And I think I blogged about it back in the day, two years ago, uh, what Microsoft should do with their curl build, but mm, they haven't. Maybe another day they will, who knows. Okay, so I think I'm going to round up. <clears throat> this is 7.6.8.0 with e-tags and bare SSL. <clears throat> Release 188. I could also mention, just, just talking about things that happened recently that uh, we got um, a fun 10k USD donation the other day from indeed.com. So we have more money now in the project and we are going to use this money to, uh, to primarily for two things. We're going to fund the bug bounties. So we're going to award more money for security problems. So if you want to earn money on finding my stupid mistakes, go dig and uh, we'll give you money for it. <laughs> They're not always my mistakes, but they tend to be my mistakes. <laughs> right, I'm gonna write myself a new minivan. Uh, I actually haven't, uh, I mean, it really 
we haven't really considered how we will deal with it when when we find uh, security problems ourselves do we reward money for that really eh, difficult uh, no we don't so uh, no, uh, no no riding no riding minivans for now <laughs> you can let that uh, strip up uh, And I'm going to also use part of the money to fund people attending Curl Up, our conference in Berlin this year, and a, a team dinner in Berlin for the ones who are attending Curl Up in May in Berlin. So if you're into Curl internet protocols and uh, spending a day doing weird or Curl stuff in Berlin, you should come to, to Curl Up and get a dinner. <coughs> spend all the money at one occasion. Yeah, that seems like a clever idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, use use money from the tiny companies support to support the big and rich companies. That seems like a fair setup. Uh, no, but yeah, sure. Sweden is fine, but uh, I'm, we're trying to move the curl up um, conference around to different European cities every year, and we actually had a vote a while ago about uh, voting for some uh, uh, European capitals or where we would do the next one. And Berlin got the most votes, even though we were in Berlin, we were in in Germany in twenty seventeen. So we've been in Germany, in Sweden, in. Check yeah, and now we're back in Germany this year. Who knows where we're going next year? It won't be Germany at least next year. So uh, mm. yeah, there's a lot of tech in in Berlin and, and a lot of interest. Yeah, uh, I think we're looking for places that are more um, airport hubby places that you should be easy to go to from other capitals of Europe I think <laughs> it probably won't be the UK either no right <laughs> well we'll see about that uh, the next one in 2021 I am uh, who knows where where that uh, disaster brexit has happened taken until then so we'll see I'm, sh I'm I know that we have many friends in the UK and many friends with big offices in the UK and London. So London is actually, it has been a pretty good option. Uh, so it's a bit transport wise, it has been good, but I don't know what happens after Brexit and everything. So we'll see. Well, I, I don't think Denmark is high on the list. Uh, we don't have many Danish contributors and we have, I don't think we have any offers for like Copenhagen, but uh, we had Madrid and Paris, London, uh, and, and a few other. Yeah, Copenhagen is nice uh, transport wise, so I, I'm not against it. But we haven't had anyone offering, and we haven't had um, any good sort of facility to host in. But uh, no, I think Paris maybe, or, or I don't know, well, pa uh, we'll see. I, well, I'd probably run a new vote about that, uh, like this autumn or something. But that, that's for next year, right? So it's Berlin this year. So it's going to be fun. That's, um, yeah, where is that? When is that? It's May. Uh, May 9 and 10. That's the link to the curl app information. <clears throat> you can't really sign up for this yet because I haven't made the logistics for that, but I should really do it so we could start with that as well. And you can also provide your ideas of what to talk about and do at curl up on this wiki page. Uh, as usual, I've added a bunch of topics and as usual, a little bit too many of them have my names on them, 
because I got completely exhausted by doing that. But uh, anyway, now I'm going to uh, quit this stream and go and get a coffee and uh, well, this was fun, 7.6.8.0. Thank you for watching. Um, file bugs, uh, do pull requests and uh, I'll uh, stream again uh, soon. Bye.